stream. My name is Leslie Strohs and I'm an artist and art professor and today we are going to be drawing this little cottage that we drew last month in Inktober. So if you want to, if you were here for one of those live streams you can see the drawing of it or you can catch that one on the replay as well. And I will start by going over a little bit of my supplies. So I have a combination today of Windsor and & Newton and Daniel Smith Professional Watercolors. And I've, I'm experimenting, I'm always tweaking my palette slightly. And I've been using the Daniel Smith watercolors in my uh, tiny paintings. And so I have those colors there and I'm, and I'm becoming familiar with them. And so I wanted to incorporate some of those with some of the Windsor & Newton watercolors that I also use almost exclusively in other paintings. So here I have, um, if, if you want to jot them down, you can see, move things down just a little bit. And I've written everything out right here so that you can see the colors. So um, this is Daniel Smith. If, if it says DS above it, it's Daniel Smith. And if it says WN above it, it is Windsor Newton. So this is hence a yellow light, which I'm using for my cool yellow. This is Windsor Newton um, Cad Yellow Pale, which I'm using for my warm yellow. And then New Gamboge I'm using for more of a, my orangey yellow. This is Daniel Smith. And then Pyrrol Scarlet, I'm exploring uh, replacing that, or using that to replace Cadmium Red uh, Light. I'm trying to find ways to not use Cadmiums in my paintings. So I'm gonna give that a try. And then I have uh, Quinacridone Red and I love to use permanent alizarin crimson, but we're going to give this a try today. Then uh, Windsor Newton's light red. I probably don't have any need to use that today. And then in the bottom row, I have permanent sap green. Hi, Victor. How are you? And then cerulean blue, phthalo blue, French ultramarine, burnt sienna, and Payne's gray. And I did a little color test comparing the Windsor Newton French ultramarine to the Daniel Smith and um, to be honest, I'm not sure if the Daniel Smith is French ultramarine. Oh, no, it is. Um, but I preferred the pigment on the French ultramarine. I preferred the color, so I'm using the Windsor Newton for that. And the reason I have Daniel Smith colors sprinkled in here is because I need to place an order uh, for Windsor and Newton to do, uh, replace, some, replace some of those and see how they compare. I'm always one different brands and different colors and doing that. So I this is a copy on a cotton, 100% cotton paper of the original ink drawing that I did. The original ink drawing is across the room in an envelope. So, um, but it came out pretty well. I've been exploring different papers so that I can uh, offer those in my shop. And so I'm painting on different papers. Last week I painted on a Bockingford and then this is uh, 100% cotton paper. If you don't have these colors, don't worry. If you have a cool and a warm of each of the primaries, that is basically all you're going to need. And because I'm, com I'm unfamiliar with the way these colors work together, I've not used this palette. I just configured it today. I did take the time to do a few little paint swatches which I always do when I have a new palette because uh, combinations are going to work differently amongst different brands and different combinations of different brands. So these are my phthalo blue combinations and these are all different combinations with the top row. So, and then these are the cerulean blue and these are the ultramarine blue. In general, ultramarine blues are usually going to give you a warmer, um, kind of a woodsier green colors and the cerulean and the phthalo are going to give you cooler greens, but it's nice to see how they play out. I'm, I've got to say, I'm not as impressed with the phthalo um, in, in this configuration mixed with these. They, they seem to be very samey. They seem very similar, and it seems that the cerulean can do the same thing. So I may just stick with cerulean and ultramarine, but we'll see. And welcome. Thank you for being here. So I'm going to start with the sky, um, and I also oh, I also have two water jugs. I have two large ones, ones for rinsing the dirty brush, and then 
or cleaning the dirty brush and then rinsing it in the larger one to keep it clean. And that way I don't really need to use a rag too much. And then I do have a spray bottle. And I'll start by just spraying my palette. And let that water sink in a little bit and revive some of those colors. And for the brushes, I have Rosemary number no. four Shiraz pointed round and the number no. six Shiraz pointed round. And these are my two favorite brushes. I'll probably use this at the beginning the most, the number no. six pointed round. So wetting my brush and mixing up a nice color for the sky. Now that sky is quite, uh, it's very much of a cerulean blue. And I might just drop in a little bit of ultramarine. And I like to have a scrap sheet of paper always available. It's a little too vibrant, so I'm just, I like the color, but I want it to be a little bit less wet. So I'm just dropping a bit more water in my mix and I've already pre-wet the paper. Um, it's dry now, but I pre-wet it to stretch it. And I'm going to go behind these trees for the sky holes up in the front. And again, this is uh, first time using this paper for me, so I'm exploring it. So what I did to attach my paper to the board was I wet the back and then I also wet the front and then I just taped it down. I don't, this tape isn't really doing anything um, serious, but it is, it is going to create a nice border around the picture. All right, so I'm gonna let that set and I probably want to think about uh, putting down my first base color for the house. And I probably should have taken some time to pre-decide. Um, my inclination is to want to use a little bit of phthalo. Let's just try. That's far too much. Phthalo is a very staining color, so a little bit goes a long way. But if I take some of that and I want to lighten it a little bit. I think I'll just use a dash of the cad yellow pale just to try to get the right tone. That's getting, that's not bad actually, because that's going to dry a lot lighter. So I think I'll just do another drop of water in there and I'm going to lay down my first coat on the painted portion. And these eaves are also painted. And then we have the color down here as well. I'm just going to paint this whole section and then I'll draw out the other colors later. Because this gray of this railing Has some of these greeny grays in it. All right, and now I want to mix up some of the greens for the tree. So for a base green, I'm going to use, um, I think, some ultramarine and the Hansa Yellow Light. On a nice light warm green for the top. And again, I'm just putting down the undercoat here, so I'll come in later. I actually want a little bit more yellow in this mix. I 
and I want to be careful. Um, there is sort of a grayness to this chimney breast, or like a yellowy, pale color, so I don't want to paint over that. And I want to leave some spaces uh, for the blue of the sky. There's, these are yellowy greens too, so we'll put down the first base coat on these. And these are also in the sunlight. So all of the areas in the composition where I'm seeing yellow, the more yellows than the pales, I'm just going to drop in a little bit of these. There isn't too much to paint in the house this time. It's a lot of foliage. And I mean, there is stuff to paint in the house, but not quite as many details. And this green of the grass, again, I think using those same two colors for a base coat. So the Hansi Yellow Light and the Ultramarine Blue. And these colors will dry lighter than they go down. It's just something you have to think about always with watercolor. up some cool greens up here and I'm going to use the cerulean for that. Actually, I'm not liking um, I'm not liking the cerulean for that for the darker it's it's okay for the lighter greens but when I go in and I try yeah. 
So we're gonna just shift that to the phthalo. The phthalo is a more transparent color. Um, there's a bit of an opaque opacity to that. And again, I'm experimenting with mixing different brands together. So I think it's actually getting me quite earthy, but I like it. And so I'm just pre-mixing. The phthalo, the hence yellow light, and a bit of the just a touch of the quinacridone scarlet, or red, sorry, the quinacridone red. And that is a bit too greeny, I, although I might want, no. So we'll add a dash more of the, I like the darkness of that for some of the shadows. So that's a more medium, that is a darker, and just take some of those colors and mix a bit more water for a more medium color. Although, that's better. And I'm just gonna drop in some of those darks. And I'm not using any masking fluid today. I often do. But I'm just gonna paint around, it'll be easier. So welcome if you're stopping in. Let me know where you're from in the comments. I'm always interested to know where people are tuning in from. taking some of this darkest color and putting it in these deep, deep shadows. And the ink covers most of that, but I do want to get some color in there as well. So this is still a bit damp, but it's a good time to add a bit more, some darker greens. Just to give a suggestion of some of the depth of the grass. I want to lift just a little bit of that in some areas just to give it a 
a more organic feeling. Victor says, how long does it usually take you to sketch out a drawing before painting them? Um, it depends on it depends on the picture, Victor. Um, I did this one online. Actually, I did the pre-sketch before. The pencil sketch doesn't take that long, usually about 15, 20 minutes, depending on how complicated the scene is. And then um, it takes a little bit longer to ink it usually because I like to add a lot of texture in my ink. So I think I'm gonna use a bit of the cerulean. I want to start putting in some of the color for the path. So I'm just gonna take a dash of the cerulean and I think I am gonna use a little bit. I did this last time too, said I wasn't gonna use a color and then I went and used it, but I'm gonna use a dash of this um, light red, which is the same pigment as a burnt sienna, so you could use a burnt sienna. Just to give some grays that have a bit of orange in them. And then I'm going to drop it in different areas for the base coat. again there. And I want more of a gray for some of this woodwork. Just want to make a little bit more room here. And for gray, I use some ultramarine burnt sienna and I'm going to use a dash of the Payne's gray which is getting me where I want if you can see so I'm just going to I'm using the smaller brush now I'm using the four going to drop in some of these details. And I'm going to add a bit more blue. I want more of a bluey gray as well. Again, they'll dry lighter, but I actually, I'm taking um, just a stiff small brush and I want to pick out some of the colors in there just to give more of a variation, like to mimic the way the wood is. And I think I want to tackle that chimney breast, which is a bit yellow. I think we're dry around it, dry enough. So I'm going to use a bit of the Cad Yellow Pale I don't have yellow ochre in here. That's what I'm missing. Um, gosh, I don't know how I have that oversight. Let me see if I have a yellow ochre nearby because I gotta have that. I should have caught that there was something missing there. Always use a yellow ochre or a raw umber, one or the other. We'll just um, put her there on the end. It makes beautiful greens and it's nice for, if you have a, a brighter yellow, it's nice for making it a bit more earthy looking. It's still a bit too yellow. I think I got into the wrong yellow there by mistake. I 
can take a dash of that. It's getting me too red, but I like that color for some of these other areas. So along the way, when you mix colors, it's nice to take them where you see them. There's a little bit of this redness here. I'm not sure if I'm loving the paper. It's buckling quite a bit, even though it's pre-wet. Again, I'm experimenting today with a different paper. I bet you can see that the Water's just sort of laying on top. So I would have used the Bocking for it, but I realized after I put up the, the survey to ask people what they would like me to paint today that I didn't have a copy of this drawing on the Bocking for it. I only had the original and I didn't want, I don't want to paint the originals of these. Drop that in there, just behind some of those leaves. And it will dry darker, but I want to just mute it a bit more like that. This is 100% cotton paper, but it's not sinking in quite as much as I would like it to. Just a little bit of yellow in these steps. And we have some yellow here in the foliage. Some pretty yellow flowers. And there's some sprigs of purple in there as well. I think I'm gonna use some, um, some ultramarine. I'm running out of space here, let me just. I take a bit of ultramarine and some of this cornacridone red. Make a nice pretty purple. And I want to dilute that a bit. So that should, yeah, if I have enough water added to the mix, it'll be lighter. So just add a bit of that. Oh, that's bleeding into my yellow. I'll hold off on that. I think I'm going to scrub out a bit. And I'm going to mix up a nice gray over here. Too blue. Actually, let's use what's in here. Warm it up just a little bit more. And I want to get some nice colors for some of these shadows. In some of these birch trees. And 
I also can use a little bit of that here in the pavement. But I want to do this to it and give it a bit of um, a bit of a variation. It'll, it's kind of dilutes the colors, splits them up a bit. And I'm going to do a little mix of the light red and the burnt sienna, a diluted mix, and drop just some of that here in these stones. Yeah, it's 100%, says it's 100% cotton paper, but it won't lift the way 100% uh, cotton paper usually will. So I'm gonna give this a thumbs down for this paper. Unless you're doing a very light coloring with it, it's not ideal for watercolor. But don't worry, it's not a paper that um, I think you could even buy, it's just from the printer. some more shadows down in here. Oh, sorry, I have a question. Victor, thanks, Leslie. Greetings from Thailand. Greetings, greetings from Thailand. Greetings, Do greetings Donna, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. It's not the going so great. I'm struggling a lot with the paper today. I, um, I'm using some paper from my printer and I'm not happy with the way the paint is working with it. So be kind in your assessments. Ugh, this phthalo is so pigmented. to just make this a bit um, more of the planet. It's a bit too neon. Thalo has a tendency to be very neon like that. But if you add a little bit of red, I did add it to the mix, but now I have too much. I think that's getting us there. Yeah, I still, it's a bit green. Let's add a bit, let's add a dash of. This is where I struggle more with phthalo with watercolor because it is so pigmented. And so is this, so is this red. So you can see they keep fighting each other. They keep wanting to give me a gray. One wants to be dominant over the other. So you have to add very carefully. And then I'm using cad yellow, which they're probably three colors, but I like the gray that I'm getting with them. So let's see, the paper's not drying as quickly, but some of these areas where I want to kind of heighten this grayness. The different grays. There, I like that. 
Now the windows in this cottage, they're the same color, really, as the house. Oh, Jill. Hello, Jill. Welcome. That's my worst live stream so far. I'm really struggling with the paper, <laughs> but welcome anyway. Um, Xavier, it still looks great. Thank you. What pans are you using, by the way? Um, I did discuss it a little bit at the beginning, but we'll give this a second to dry and I'll go through and tell you. I'm, I'm trying a whole different combination today. Um, I'm mixing some of the Daniel Smith with the Windsor Newton paints. So, and the reason is that I use the Daniel Smith paints in my tiny palette and I've become really accustomed to the way they mix with one another. And uh, I really like the Hansa Yellow Light and the new Gamboge. I, I just thought I would experiment with some of them, replace some of my cadmiums, keeping some of my Windsor Newtons. So if you see DS, it means it's Daniel Smith. If you see WN, it's Windsor Newton. But very quickly, I have Hansa Yellow Light, Cad Yellow Pale, new Gamboge, Pyrrol Scotland, <laughs> Pyrrol Scarlet, Quinacridone Red, Light Red, and then I forgot to add Yellow Ochre, so that's over here. Um, permanent Sap Green, Cerulean Blue, Phthalo Blue, French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna, and Payne's Gray. But don't worry if you don't have all these colors, you don't need them. Really, all you need is a cool and a warm for each of the primaries, and they don't need to be these cool and warm colors. They can be um, whatever works best for you. So I want to do a little bit with this area a bit more, and I want to drop in some of these mixes. to add a little bit more depth and keep it um, a diluted mix. And where I see more of the shadows, I'm putting in the darker version. And this is all very wet, so I'm a bit stuck for areas. I'm going to drop in some more darks in the shadows. always trying to leave room for some of the sky holes. I'm just going to drop in some of the darkest darks and let them bleed in a bit. And because this paper is, it is a cotton paper, but it's not bleeding as much as I want it to. So I think what I'm going to do is mix up a bit of a uh, warmer green and just drop it in and let's see what it does. Let's have a big old experimental day. I don't think I probably want that right now. So I'm gonna use some of the Hansa Yellow Light and the Ultramarine Blue. And again, I really decided I liked the ultramarine blue better than in Windsor Newton than the um, Daniel Smith. So that's going to give me a nicer, lighter, warmer color. I don't see it too much in the trees, but because these are up higher, I don't know, let's just drop it in. And we'll let it do some of the magic that it should do on a good paper. want it quite that green on this side. So I'm going to cool it off with a little bit of the Quin Red, knowing that it's pretty powerful. 
so that cools it down a bit more but it also darkens it so I need to add a bit more yellow let's add a touch of the cad yellow can be overpowering sometimes but I like that so we'll just drop a little bit of that here and there Color chill with a hair dryer. Um, why not dry it with a hair dryer? It'll be so loud <laughs> that I'll lose you all. You'll all just check out. Donna says, I agree with Xavier. It still looks great for all the trouble with the paper. Oh, thank you. I didn't see that you said, um, thank you. Appreciate it. I didn't see that you said that. So I'm gonna, st I'm standing up and looking at it um, from above because you always want to do that. Um, you always want to step back. There, some of this area here are darker greens. So I'm gonna take some ultramarine and I'm gonna try just a dash of the new gamboge. Oh, wrong, wrong pan. And in general, the closer you get is the darker. I'm not, this palette is kind of too, I should be mixing up there. I want more color. I kind of like that. Yeah, let's add some. I'll just sprinkle it in. I want to make sure my brush isn't too wet. Or the, I mean, it will tend to bleed. Just want to drop in a little bit. I want to keep in some of the reds and some of the lights and have it, you know, look the way that grass looks. And if it was cotton paper, I would lift some of this in the background because it's not quite as um, it's not quite as light as I as I would like it to be. So I'm putting a bit of depth into that, and I think we are dry enough here where we can add some of that purple into this area. Ugh, too wet. I'm gonna use the tiny brush for this. It's not gonna be quite as purple as I'd like it, but then again, neither is the photo. It's just a suggestion that it's there. And then again, like I like to spread the love, so I wanna put this purple in some other areas where I see it, so. In some of these shadows and this keeps it from being too greeny you know because there is a lot of color put some of the purple and some of the shadows here of the tree and even a little bit up here I actually want to do something here um, I have some questions Erica says, where do you get your reference photos from? I've been trying to Google, but the pics have, um, but the pics have too much in them. I take a lot of my own photos. So this is um, from a place in Northeastern Wisconsin. And I've just always liked this, um, just always really liked this house. It's a museum now. And so I have a, an album in my phone where I keep, um, where I keep interesting photos that I might want to paint so that I always have references. I like to paint on location as much as I can, but um, in winter that becomes more difficult. So winter is usually more my time 
to paint in the studio and that's when I'll, I'll use my own photos. But you can also look at sites like um, Unsplash or Pick-A-Bay and you can Google in different, um, different words and you can sometimes find pictures that way and then those will be royalty free, which is nice. It's always nice. So I do a combination of the two, um, of taking my own pictures and then maybe using um, photo references from royalty-free sites, if that answers your question. Uh, Zom, I really love your Go Draw mini palette videos. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much, Zom. I, um, I, I love making them. They're a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to paint outside with those. And honestly, um, the impetus from that was partly partly because I do like to paint outside in all weather. And if I'm painting tiny, if it's bad, if it's bad weather, if it's rainy or if it's wet, I can, um, I can always just do a quick little painting or sit in a cafe or sit in my car and open the hatch. I'll do that sometimes. I'm wanting to mix up a nice shadow color, not that inky, but um, just a two color one, just for under the eaves. Um, in some of these areas. Let's make sure the water control is all right. And it will also add some depth and also a bit more color. Uh, normally I would just turn the paper. There we go. And I've started to add a bit in the shadows under here as well, but And you see that makes this wood pop a bit more above it, whereas before it was just sort of bleeding together a little bit too much. So it's always the adding of the darks that will really take the work to the next level. So I'm gonna take some of that mixture and just drop it in where I see some of the other really dark shadows, just to help these light shadows next to it pop a bit more. And I, put it, I don't know what's, that's bushes. I don't know how that got to be sort of mucky, but let's just, we'll just make it that color. We can't get it too light because there's already pigment mixed in. And I see a little bit of yellow in the window there. clean this up a bit. I normally would have this on a paper towel or something, but don't today. All right, so yeah, I want to pull some of the yellows from here. And I actually, I, I'm thinking of experimenting a little bit. I don't know if I have a jelly pen here. I have this Mimi paint marker. Do you think that's any good? I think it's silver, so no, that's not gonna work. I have my tiny art kit in the other room, so I have everything I need in there and not so much next to me. So this will give us some whites. It's not behaving perfectly, but I, I wanna pick up a few of the whites in here and this just might do it. just to give it that, that feeling. And maybe just do that highlight there. And the Jelly Roll pen tends to um, sink in a bit, so it's not very harsh long-term. But I think I, I wanted to define some of those boards a bit more. I might just do this. And I always have cotton buds handy. I 
think I like that. It adds a bit more definition there because this is in this stuff, the, the door and the window, and that's all underneath sort of this overhang, but the railing isn't really. So um, I think I might like to take some of this purple again and just dot that in here again. I think we're, clo we're close to done. I mean, I'm close to calling it like a painted sketch and call it done, but I want to do a little bit more detail in the windows, a little bit more reflection. So I'm going to take a bit of the cad yellow pale and I'm going to dilute it. And then I'm going to take just a teeny tiny bit of my phthalo it's so staining that you have to go slow with it. Just a dash. There, there we go. And I'm going to just drop that in some of these window panes. You know, they're reflecting <clears throat> the things around them. What do we think? Do we like it? And let me stand up again. I'm, I'm missing, I'm really being more sketchy than I normally am, which is maybe a good thing. I want a bit more of this earthy green. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day with that. I think I will, um, I think I would do better if I was on other paper, but it's a simple, simple watercolor sketch. So I think that's good to call it a day. What do you guys think? So thanks for stopping by. If you've been here since the beginning, thanks for sticking around. Um, I always see things that I want to fix after I announce that I'm done make some of these a bit more uniform. And if you want to catch the drawing of this, you can catch the drawing um, on my page and then replay. And also, oh, I wanted to say, um, Erica, when you asked if you're still here, if you asked about reference photos, um, I do have uh, the photographs for every single drawing that I did for Inktober. Those are on my website. And you can download those and you can use those. There's There are 31 paintings up there. And um, so you can use those for practice. I think, actually, I want to just a little bit more on the very top of the sky. And just give a bit more of that depth. Is always brighter and darker up on top and then it fades down and that'll be it so thanks for joining me i hope you all have a beautiful day and we'll see you next sunday bye